Hello YouTube and welcome to PHP tutorial number 26 in the PHP programming tutorial series. Now in this video, as you guys have been bugging me about a lot lately, we are going to start the MySQL tutorials. And we're going to cover MySQL for the next maybe 5 or 6 videos. Go over, you know, the basic functions of MySQL. So hopefully that doesn't annoy anyone who doesn't really want to learn about MySQL, you can kind of skip through them. But yeah, this is number one and I hope you enjoy them. So before I start this video, I actually purchased a new microphone the other day. I was talking to my friend Brenny and he recommended this um, Blue Snowball microphone. And it's actually really good, the quality is fantastic. So thanks to my friend Brenny, I will, all the videos will now be in high definition. So I'll see you link his channel in the description. He's a really cool guy. He makes Minecraft videos. So go to his channel, pay him a visit, leave a comment and subscribe, whatever. So let's continue with the first MySQL tutorial. So MySQL, SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and MySQL is a relational database management system, and that just sounds like a bunch of jumbo words just put together, but if you remember back in school, if you did Microsoft Access, I'm sure you did, as I covered it multiple times, it was probably the most boring subject in school, doing databases in Microsoft Access. If you remember when you did relational databases where you could link different fields and different tables together. That's kind of how the concept is in MySQL. You can link different fields together. It's a database management system and you'll learn a lot about it in the next few videos. So if you, you know, if you look at MySQL and if the applications that you currently code for because you're new in PHP, if they're not really complicated, then MySQL may seem kind of pointless to you. You might not really find a meaning, so you might not really find a, a place to use it. But it's actually used on most um, web applications across the web, like Wikipedia and Facebook and YouTube, all use MySQL to store the data. And that's because you can run queries and take data and put in data almost instantly without the user, um, you know, feeling any of the, um, feeling any, you know, time loss or having to wait to, for anything. It's really convenient and hopefully we can learn about it today and you guys will understand just how important MySQL is. So before we actually continue with this, you're going to need to have installed MySQL. So when you installed XAMPP, I told you guys to install MySQL as well. If you haven't got it installed, then go back and install MySQL when you install XAMPP, and it should be installed as PHP MyAdmin. So if you go over to security, which we set up in video number two, I believe. If you remember, we set up a password over here um, where it says MySQL super, super user and we set a user, actually the user is root and we set a password. So if you don't remember your password, I think you probably have to reinstall XAMPP, but hopefully you remember your password, mine was simply password and we can continue. So you need to head over to localhost and you, if you see down here in tools, you'll see PHP MyAdmin. Now just click on that. Now PHP MyAdmin is the web based control panel for MySQL. So we can log in now, put password, and you'll be presented with this um, screen. It might look kind of confusing to you at first. There's a lot of things going on over here and over here, but don't worry, it will all become um, quite, you know, you'll be able to get used to using this quite soon. So the first thing that you'll see is on the left, you'll see a bunch of tables here. This is where our tables will be held. And you'll see all these random tables if you have XAMPP. It might be different for WAMP and other Apache installations, but for XAMPP you'll see these tables. Now, they don't mean anything to you. You don't need to delete or modify any of them. These tables are just for some different applications on XAMPP. So CD call, for example, they're all used for applications. I would not suggest deleting any of them. Just kind of forget that they exist. Um, modifying some of them may impair your XAMPP and you may have to reinstall it. So just leave them as they are. So this on the right, you can see the basic uh, control panel for MySQL. And we can actually run queries here or manually do things on the control panel without actually doing any PHP code. So we have here SQL. We can run SQL queries on here without doing it in PHP. But we're not going to be doing that today. And um, we're going to do that through PHP in the next tutorial. So what we're going to do is head over to here where it says databases, click on that. I'm going to create our very first database. Now let's just say that we run a forum and each user needs to have 
an account. So we'll just call this accounts and hit create. And it says database accounts has been created. And if you look over here on the left, you'll see accounts up here on your databases. Click there. And what you can now do is create a table inside of this database. So our first table, it's going to be users. And here we need to um, specify the number of columns. So let's just try and think about this, how many columns we're going to need in our database. Let's just open up Notepad. We'll have Notepad++. Plus plus. Okay, so the first column we're going to need is ID. And that's because... Um, each user is going to need a unique ID and what we can do with MySQL is set a uh, set a field to just auto increment and that means it'll go up by one each time and each one will be unique so that can give each user a unique ID next thing we want to have the user enter a username then a password then we'll have first name and last name and that's one two three four five so we're gonna have five columns in here so type 5, hit go, and don't worry about making too little or too many because you can modify the amount of columns. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So as I said, the first column we're going to need to do is ID, so just type ID. And what we're going to put here as the type, we, we need to select the data type. And as it's going to be a simple number, just select integer. And if we scroll all the way down here, you will see index we're going to select index as primary key and going back to microsoft access you should remember what a primary key is if you don't it just it's the primary key of the table it will sort by this key um by default but you can change that when you run queries and the next thing we need to do is select ai now what this will do is this will auto increment the um the a value each time so the first entry we have we'll just not enter anything for this and it will go to one and then two and then three and that gives each user a unique ID so we're not gonna select it to be null because it, it needs to be a value so the next one next column we're going to do is it's going notepad plus plus is username so we'll simply type username and the value for this you might think it will be text because you name username is text but we're actually going to select it to be varchar and this allows us to limit the length of the username but also if we're using something small like a username then a varchar is the best way to go because text takes up more memory because I think it can hold I'm not going to give you any specific numbers because I can't actually recall how many characters a text can hold but it's a lot it's a lot more than you need for a username <coughs> so we have username Varchar, the length we're going to select as let's say 20 username can be 20 characters long and that's all we need to do for that so use column username type Varchar and length 20 and next one is password and we're going to do the same for this we're going to select as Varchar 20 and then the next one is first name so we'll just type first as a Varchar 20 and finally we'll just type last for last name Varchar and 20. Now let's say we want to have another column in here called about me and remember I said we can modify the amount of columns we have. If we go down here where it says save or add one columns just simply specify the amount of columns you'd like to add. I'm just gonna type one hit go and we'll now have a new column here. I'm just gonna say about and here's an example where we might want to use text because some person might want to write a lot of text about themselves so we'll just select text and that is it we can now create our first table and you do that by just clicking on save and we now have our own users table here now currently it um, contains no values because we've only specified the table itself and the different fields so what we can do is actually manually insert data by clicking here on insert and for the first one, for ID, leave this blank because obviously it's going to auto increment so you'll see that will automatically go to 1. And for username, I'm just going to type teach me computer. Password will be password123. First name, we're going to just type as Chris. Last name, Johnson. And about me, I'm not going to waste your time writing a big, you know, autobiography about myself. But I'm just going to type my name is Chris for about okay and if you go down here to go and you'll see it's now 
look, there's a green tick, so that means it's it's gone through. It's now inserted each row. So if we go here, and we have our first row, ID1, teaching computer, password123, and there we have our first user in our database. Now, that's not how we're going to do it each time. I'm going to show you in the next tutorial how to do it through a MySQL query and actually through a PHP page. So you can enter values on a PHP page and insert them into a database. So before I end this video, I'm just going to show you how to... What's I? Oh yeah, I'm going to show you how to connect to the database first of all. Our first little MySQL query. So open up Notepad++. I'll plus plus. delete this. Make our first... MySQL query here, so save this as we're gonna go to um hey sorry about that, I'm not at the correct directory. Okay, we're here. So we're gonna save this as mysql.php. And the way we can connect to a database is simply by typing mysql underscore connect. And then inside here we need um sorry about that, we need three parameters, we need to specify three things. The first one is the username, and we do that in quotations, or you can use a variable. So username is root, and this will depend on what you specified yours in security. And the second password, sorry, the second parameter is the password, which is password for me. And then the third one is the, oh, sorry, I've actually done that wrong. Excuse me. The first parameter we need to enter is the host, which is localhost, and this will be same for your cPanel, if. Your, you have an, um, a locally hosted MySQL database if you're just running off PHP my admin so that should be all you need to type localhost then have a comment and the second parameter my mistake is the username which is root and the third parameter is the password in my case this is password in your case this might be something else so we've now had done that so we can just end that there or actually what we're going to do is we're going to type or die and then in brackets we want to type mysql underscore error and this or die will just if if it throws an exception if this doesn't work it's going to just give a mysql error so we can end that there save this and we can now go to mysql.php and you'll see we have no error message however if we go back on opal plus plus change the password to password one hit save and we're presented with an error so that's the end of the first tutorial to kind of let's get a little overview on it PHP my admin is on all cPanel it should be on all hosts anyway unless your host is like from dinosaur ages so you should have PHP my admin installed on all hosts such as in GoDaddy and hosting 24 whatever you want to use and you can access it the same way by clicking cPanel sorry by clicking PHP my admin and you can manually run queries or manage your database and usernames or you can do it through PHP, which I'll be covering in the next tutorial. So this has been kind of an introduction to MySQL and PHP my admin, but in the next video we're going to actually start looking at how we can use PHP to interact with a database and you know all the kind of more fun aspects of this. So please like the video, it helps a lot. Leave a comment if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel.